So in today's lesson, we'll be looking at index notation. Well, let's have a look at this here. Two and then like a superscript three or a three written above and to the right of our number two. Now you've probably seen this before. It's written in what's called index notation. Now as a maths operation, what that actually means is two times two and then times two again. Or if you think about it, we're timesing two by itself three times there, aren't we? Now the way that we usually describe this in maths, probably what you're more familiar with is 2 to the power of 3. Now we're going to have a look at a couple of different terms or a couple of different definitions you need to be aware of when we're working our way through this index notation. So we'll just write that 2 to the power of 3 out again there. And we'll look firstly at this number 2 here. Well in terms of our 2 to the power of 3, it's at the bottom, isn't it? So if you think about that bottom, what's another word for bottom? Well, base, isn't it? So that's called our base number. And then our three here, well, the name that you're probably most familiar with with that is power. But it can sometimes be called an exponent, an index, or an indice. Now, we'll use all of those different names at different times here, just so you get used to each of those different words. All right, let's have a look at some examples now with this index notation. So number one, we're asked to write the following in index form. So we'll start off with part A. We've got 2 times 2 times 2. Looks a little bit familiar, doesn't it? Well, we've got that 2 there. It's repeated all the way through the question. So it'll be our base number. Now, how many times are we multiplying the 2 together? Three times, aren't we? So our power will be 3 there, giving us 2 to the power of 3. Let's have a look at part B, one we haven't done before. 7 times 7, times 7 times 7, and then times by another 7. So what's our base number in this one? Well, it's that 7, isn't it, that's been repeated all the way through. So we'll write that down to begin with. Now, how many 7s are we multiplying together here? 5 of them, isn't it? So our power here will be 5, giving us 7 to the power of 5 as our index form answer there. Let's look at part C now. This is a bit different, isn't it? We've got 6 to the power of 4 written in words. Well, it's actually done exactly the same way. Our base number will be our 6 there. And then our power of 4 here, well, that'll mean our final answer is 6 with that 4 raised up as a superscript, or 6 to the power of 4. All right, let's have a look at another question now. In number 2, we're asked to evaluate the following. A little bit difference in the wording there. For part A, we've got our 2 to the power of 3 again. Now we've got our base number there, 2, so we'll write that one out and we're going to multiply it by itself three times. So let's write out our times 2s till we've got three 2s multiplied together there. Now here we're asked to evaluate the following. Do you know what evaluate means? Well, effectively, it just means work out the answer or work out what it's equal to. So let's see here. 2 times 2, that's equal to 4, isn't it? So if we multiply it by 2 again, what are we going to get? 8, aren't we? So our final answer there is 8. Let's have a look at part B now. 3 to the power of 5. This one's a bit bigger, isn't it? So our 3 is our base number. Write that down firstly. And we're going to times it by itself five times. So times three, and times another three, times three again, and times three for a fifth time. Well, let's work this one out. A bit of working out involved here. Three times three will give us nine. Times another three gives us 27. Then another three gives us 81. And then times by that last three there, and we get a final answer of 243. That was a bit of work, wasn't it? It might have been a little bit easier to do that one in our calculator, but it's good to try those things out in your head. Let's look at part C here, minus 2 to the power of 3. Well, that minus 2 there, you'll notice that's in brackets. That's just so we don't get our order of operations confused here. So we'll write our minus 2 down as our base number, and it's a power of 3, so let's times by minus 2 and times by another minus 2 there. Now to work this one out we're going to do it step by step here so we don't get confused with those negative signs. So negative 2 times by negative 2. 
Well, negative times a negative gives us positive, doesn't it? So that'll equal positive 4. Then when we times by that minus 2 on the end, we'll end up with minus 8 or negative 8 as our answer. Now, just be really careful not to mess up that negative at the end there. All right, let's have a look at part D now. 4 to the power of 3, or 4 cubed, plus 2. Well, this one's a little bit different, isn't it? We've got our power there, and we've also got an addition. So we've got a couple of different operations happening here. How are we going to work out which one comes first? We'll use order of operations, won't we? Or bid mass, as it's often called. So let's do a quick recap on this, just so you remember your correct order. Start off with our B. Well, that stands for brackets. We'll always do any brackets first. Now our I. That's our indices or powers. Then thirdly, we'll do division and multiplication. And lastly, we'll do our addition and subtraction. So let's have a look at this question here, see what we've got. Firstly, check, have we got any brackets in the question? Nope, none of them there, so we don't need to worry about that. Let's check our indices next. Now remember, an indice is a power. Well, we've got that power of 3, haven't we? So let's work out what 4 to the power of 3 is equal to. We'll write that out in what's called expanded form first. So 4 times 4 times 4. Now, there's no division or multiplication yet, is there? So we're left just with our addition and subtraction. And we've got that plus 2 there. So let's put that on the end. Right, so let's see what we've got here. Still got a couple of different operations, haven't we? We've got these multiplications and our additions. So let's have a look at our bid mass now. There's our multiplication, there's our addition. Which one's going to come first? Well, it's obviously our multiplication here, isn't it? So let's get rid of our addition now. And we're just going to focus on this 4 times 4 times 4. So they're not written there, but we'll put that in brackets just to make sure we know we've got to do that first. And let's work it out. 4 times 4, that's 16. Then if we times by 4 again, you may need your calculator there, but we end up with 64. All right, so what have we got here? 64 plus 2. So let's just write that out. Well, that's pretty straightforward to work out, isn't it? 64 plus 2, that gives us a final answer of 66. So let's have a look at part E now. Got a fair bit happening here. We've got 4 squared, or 4 to the power of 2, plus 3, times by 2 squared. All right, well, there's obviously no brackets in there, is there? So in our bid mass, we'll check our indices first. Well, what do you notice here? We've got a 4 squared, and we've got a 2 squared. Right, so which one of them are we going to do first? Well, imagine you're just reading. Which way do you read? From left to right, don't we? So we're going to do our indices from left to right as well. So let's start off with our 4 squared. That's 4 times 4. That's equal to 16. And we'll then do our 2 squared next. That's 2 times 2. So that's equal to 4. All right, we've simplified things a little bit. We've got our 16. We'll then add 3 to that. And we're then going to times it by that 4. Okay, so we've still got two operations, though, haven't we? We've got our addition and our multiplication. Which one's going to come first here? Looking at our order, it's going to be our number three, isn't it? Our multiplication. So we'll get rid of our addition, and we'll focus on this three times four there. We'll put that in brackets just like we did a moment ago, and three times four. Pretty sure you can work that out. It's 12. So we've made things a lot simpler now. We've just got our 16 plus our 12. So we'll write that down, and we can work that out then, and it'll give us a final answer of 28. Well, fantastic work there. That ends your lesson on index notation. All the best now working your way through any questions.